<laughs> hey guys, what's up? Uh, Nick Ortiz here, and today we'll be looking at the uh, mounted situation, especially from the situation. I'm not even gonna. No, I'm not even gonna cut it. I'm not even gonna cut it. I'm not even gonna cut it. Everyone, this is Dan. So today what we're going to be looking at is the uh, mounted situation, a high mount, escaping that situation, then looking at the mounted triangle situation, and then lastly ending in a situation where our opponent puts us back in a, a Mote Senkaku, the front triangle, we escape that situation, and then from there we go back to the offensive cycle. So three bleak situations that uh, pretty much correlate with each other going in our opponent's offensive cycle. How can we do things defensively? And then ultimately from a defensive cycle, go right back on the attack with some offense. So first things first, let's look at the high mount. Not only does Dan have his uh, knees getting the inside position, my elbows are away from my ribs, but he has double unders. And so hopefully you guys can hear me. This is a terrible situation. But from here, as you can see, Dan's head and shoulders far exceed his hips. So what I'm going to look to do, because Dan has no ability to control my hips because he's up on my chest, is I'm going to look to take my knees towards his glutes, and then I'm going to take my foot or feet higher than my knees. From here, I'm going to start to hip switch and push Dan side to side to displace his body weight and to get his momentum going forward. So it looks like this. Once I'm in this position, as you can see, Dan has to base out. And when he bases out, this gives me the opportunity to get an uh, inside position of one of my knees, like so. So when Dan starts to go back and tries to uh, maintain his top position, as he falls back, we cut an angle and we end up in an Ashigarami situation. So the way that's going to look from this perspective, turn this way, Dan. From here, he has double unders, high mount. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to take my knees to his glutes then my feet higher than my knees. From here, I'm just gonna push, moving my hips back and forth. And as you can see, I'm getting inside position with one of my knees. So now when Dan tries to reclaim the mounted position, I can cut an angle, and from that angle, boom, Ashigarami. Now this time, Dan gets in a situation where he goes into the high mount, but his intentions are going into a mounted triangle. The moment Dan goes into the mounted triangle, I need to make sure I'm reactive. I don't want to wait until he solidifies the lock of his legs. So as he goes into the mounted triangle, first things first, he throws over, but I don't let him lock his legs. I take my knee up towards his tailbone. From here, I need a pushing force. That's my knee. And my right arm is going to be the pullback. So there's going to be a push-pull uh, a push-pull happening in this situation, where I pull my arm back as I push with my knee. As he continues to lean forward, I look to push as I slip my arm down. There's gonna be a, set, a situation where you pretty much are gonna look to kip out, so you create little pulse movements, but because of the lock of the legs aren't solidified, it's actually very easy because it's, it's an open wedge. Now, let's contrast that with a closed wedge. Maybe I'm a little slow and his legs. I'm going to be kipping involved. Kip as I pull my arm down, my right arm down, as I push with my right knee. And we look to push him forward as we pull our arm back and we begin to lightly kip our body to create a, a displacement in, a, in Dan's weight to go forward. Now this time, we escaped the high mount situation. We looked at uh, open wedges on the mounted triangle and closed wedges. Now let's look at Dan doing the right thing and going into a front triangle. So, Dan gets into the triangle. From here, he has locked closed wedges. into a front triangle. Do not step your left leg up. So the arm that's trapped, that's the leg you step up. If you step the opposite leg up, I give Dan the ability and get the finish. What I wanna do is create an angle on Dan. Dan wants an angle on me, I want an angle on him. So you step the right leg up. The leg 
uh, that you step up it's, is the arm that's trapped. So that's how you always remember. Not only do I step my right knee up, I connect my knee and elbow, and I internally rotate my knee like so. When Dan tries to look to get into a situation where he creates an angle on me, it's going to be tough. I could either thumb post out and start to back away, or I can look to fall back and immediately throw my left leg over and start to look to cross my ankles, back heel as I extend my back, and look to separate the legs and start to clear. So just one more time really quick, the front triangle situation. As soon as he falls to his hip, I step my right leg up. From the right leg situation, I immediately connect knee and elbow, and I turn my body. Two options. I either thumb post, breaking the lock, and stepping back, and going to an offensive cycle where we go to pass. Or I step up. I feel like I can't do that, so I pistol squat back, throw my left leg over, throw the right leg over, and from here, back heel, elongate the spine, and start looking to either go into the legs, but, but at the very least, we're no longer in a defensive situation, and we can start going back on an offensive cycle. Oh, all right, guys, so there you go. Pretty much looking to escape high mount. Our opponent gets us in a mounted triangle, and then when we escape the mounted triangle and they're very uh, smart and utilize adaptation, they go to a front triangle, we escape that situation as well. We, can't, we stay pretty much calm, and then we look to go right back to our offensive cycle and get the party started.